Hi everyone and welcome to Insider Financial Talk Stocks. My name is Alex Carlson. I will be your host today, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of InsiderFinancial.com. And in this video, we will recap today's market action and discuss our game plan for tomorrow. But first up, to get our market moving reports on top small caps, click that link in the description or go to signup.insiderfinancial.com or sign up with your email on any of the pop-ups on InsiderFinancial.com. After you sign up with your email, you can then sign up with your mobile number. Mobile is the fastest way to get all of our reports and it works for all numbers worldwide. Wide. Simply enter your country code first, followed by your number. For US and Canada, be one plus area code and number. Never begin the format with zero, it will not work. And after you sign up, you will get a welcome email, which includes a free copy of the Insider Financial Guide to Penny Stocks ebook. Our ebook, our email service, and our text messaging service are all free services from insiderfinancial.com. We do not run any paid subscription service, no Discord rooms, or Telegram chat groups. Well guys, the debt ceiling debate is over and the market is now focused back on the Fed. Uh, markets caught a bit of a break today. Most Fed speakers through, through the month made no indication whatsoever that a pause in rate hikes or even rate cuts will come this year. Today, however, Philly Fed President Patrick Harker at a fireside chat said that the central bank should skip a, a hike at the June meeting as monetary policy was close to being restrictive. Fed Governor Phil Johnson Jefferson also signaled that skipping a, a hike would allow the central bank to assess data. The comments have led the markets to now pricing in nearly a 74% chance of no hike in June, according to data from the CME FedWatch tool. There were several data points today that also uh, garnered the spotlight. Chief among them was the April jolts report, which showed that job openings unexpectedly surged to 10.1 million compared to an anticipated figure of 9.35 million, while the quits rate ticked lower. It may seem odd that the jolts report would push the stock market down nearly 1% earlier in the day, but the fact of the matter is that strong jobs data indicates that continued interest rate hikes might be necessary in order to reduce stubbornly high inflation. Meanwhile, May Chicago PMI slid more than expected. Earlier in the day, China's official NBS manufacturing PMI unexpectedly fell to a five month low of 48.8 in May, stoking concerns about global growth. That's why we have uh, oil prices under 70. Uh, there is concern about overall slowness in the global economy. In terms of the names that uh, we've been covering here at InsiderFinancial.com, today in general was a pretty ugly day, but this was just simply profit taking. As I said last night about AI, uh, it could be buy the rumor, sell the news ahead of earnings. 28% of the float was short. Uh, the, the shorts were just getting absolutely squeezed ahead of the earnings report. Um, and I said the RSI was 84. Don't go chasing if you weren't already in and also use tra trailing stops. AI closed today at $40. It couldn't get above the $44 high from yesterday, uh, and we are trading under $32 after hours on earnings. Uh, Non-GAAP EPS uh, of negative 13 cents, uh, beat by four cents. Uh, revenue of 72.41 million, beat by 1.07 million. Subscription revenues uh, for the quarter was 56.9 million, constituting 79% of revenue. Uh, Non-GAAP gross profit for the quarter was 53.9 million, representing a 74% non-GAAP gross margin. Uh, Q1 outlook total revenue 70 million to 72.5 million versus consensus of 71.34 million. Uh, again, expected to post a loss from operations 25 to 30 million. Uh, the 2024 outlook is total revenue of 295 to 320 million versus consensus of 265.79 million. And again, the company is forecast to lose non-GAAP. Uh, loss from operations 50 to 75 million. So again, uh, the company has a over $4 billion market cap, but it is losing money. Uh, so these are the things that the bears are going to point out. Uh, tomorrow is going to be a down day. 
I think you're going to get a lot of week longs uh, selling at the open. I'd uh, let it shake out if you're looking to go in by the dip. I think there's a possibility we can push it under $30 to $28. So I'd be certainly watching this. And if I see a particular trade in AI, I will send out an email or a text message. So make sure you guys are signed up so you don't miss any of our trade ideas. But there were some positives today in the market. IDAI, which I talked about last night, uh, closed up 23%, uh, had a uh, PR pre-market. Nothing exciting, but you know, right now the market today was looking for anything. Uh, the company announced a notice of allowance for new U.S. patent related to identity, identity authentication via the control of third-party accounts. So that's what got the market excited. But more exciting about IDAI is it has just a 3 million share float. It also contributed to the move in CXAI, ran from 10 to 16. Big, big swings today in CXAI. This is just a 1.9 million share float. So again, this is like the perfect combination. You have an AI play with a low float. You are going to get some incredible swings. Uh, so CXAI, this is a name that you uh, need to have on your radar screen. Uh, MVIS, another one, uh, this was a short squeeze play from last night, uh, closed at the high of the day. Nice price action, up 5%. Let's see if we can continue this. IEP, talked about this one uh, a lot last night. I mean, making higher lows. Uh, Carl Icahn keeps saying revenge is a dish best served cold. Uh, we're just waiting to see what Uncle Carl is going to do there. And speaking of, uh, of names, uh, Occidental Petroleum, Oxy, O-X-Y, uh, Uncle, uh, Grandpa Warren, he keeps buying stock hand over fist, uh, now owns about 25% of the company. Uh, interesting play there. Uh, I actually picked up some. Let's see how it plays out. Uh, I'm just looking for a bounce here, and uh, hopefully we also got the OPEC meeting next week. So let's see, uh, uh, or, or, or this weekend, OPEC meeting, OPEC Plus is meeting this weekend. So hopefully uh, we get some news there to get oil prices back above 70. But some names uh, that I'm watching tomorrow, uh, Chewy, C-H-W-Y, uh, big gainer in the, po in the after hours, uh, the Q1 results topped expectations, sales were up 14.7% during the quarter, and adjusted EBITDA approved to 110 0.2 million from 60.5 million a year ago. Uh, the adjusted EBITDA margin improved to 4% from 2.5% during the quarter. Uh, the Florida-based online pet product retailer saw uh, adjusted EPS rise to 20 cents versus 11 cents a year ago and the consensus mark of uh, of eight cents a share. CEO uh, uh, Summit Singh said, our first quarter results reflect accelerating double digit top line growth and continued expansion of our adjusted EBITDA margin. Net sales per active customer and auto ship customer sales also both reached new record highs for the company and continue to fuel customer loyalty and spend towards our platform. Full year revenue uh, guidance from Chewy was for 11.15 billion to 11.35 billion versus prior view for 11 billion to 11.3 billion uh, stock up 14 percent in the after hours so again you know i know we focus mostly on penny stocks and small caps but right now big caps are running you know we saw the big moves in nvidia guys you can play them with options if you don't have a big account you can buy 100 shares you're getting 10 20 swings uh, uh, uh so you can still make plenty of money trading these type of names uh NTAP also came out with earnings. Uh, what I like most about it was the $1 billion share buyback. Uh, this company has just a $13 billion market cap. So this is a very, very significant share buyback. We got trend line resistance right at 70. Stock was trading 71 after hours. We could get a clear breakout uh, tomorrow. So be watching this one, NTAP. Uh, next up is SoFi, S-O-F-I, uh, stock up 15% today. Uh, I think this one's going to keep running as the debt ceiling package negotiated by the White House and Republican leaders. Uh, it is has advanced to the U.S. House for a vote. The legislation includes a provision that sets a definitive end for the pause on the repayments of federal student loans, which had started soon after the pandemic hit the uh, in 2020. As said in the bill, student loan repayments will start 60 days 
uh, after the last moratorium extension. With the end of the student loan payment moratorium, demand may increase for SoFi's student loan refinancing services, which was a large part of the company's business for the pandemic. So again, this is a debt ceiling play. Nice, nice price action in SoFi today, and I think this one's gonna continue. Uh, next up is GFAI, Bounced Off Critical Support. This is an AI name that I've been covering a lot, so uh, keep this one on your radar screen. And last but not least, a nice price action today in Asana, A-S-A-N. Uh, earnings tomorrow after the bell. Uh, this has been beating expectations the last few times, but what I really like about this one is uh, this summer, uh, CEO Dustin Moskovitz, his uh, insider buying program is set to kick in. His last major insider buy was last September at $18 a share. He bought $350 million worth of stock. This guy is a multi-billionaire. I think he's worth eight, $10 billion. He's a co-founder of Facebook. Asana is the company he started after Facebook, has just a $5 billion market cap. Uh, put ASAN -A -A on your radar screen earnings tomorrow after the bell and guys we are going to be doing a lot more research for our subscribers on under the radar AI and quantum computing stocks to get any of our small cap reports we cover low floats short squeezes recent IPOs biotech FDA plays AI stocks Click that link in the description or go to signup.insiderfinancial.com or sign up on any of the pop-ups on insiderfinancial.com. No spam, your info never shared, unsubscribe anytime. You can even sign up just to see the level of research we do here at insiderfinancial.com and unsubscribe. And guys, if you hear in the background, that is my golden retriever. He needs to go out. So I'm going to wrap this up. Finally, Insider Financial and I are not investment advisors. This video does not provide investment advice. Always do your research, make your own investment decisions, or consult with your nearest financial advisor. This video is not a solicitation or recommendation by Seller Hold Securities. This video is our opinions meant for information educational purposes only and does not provide investment advice past performance is not indicative of future performance thanks for watching remember to smash that like button and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos is uploaded good luck tomorrow bye bye